Have you ever heard someone describe education like this? Education is an ascension, much like flying, for the more you learn, the higher you soar, and before you know it, you are high above the clouds, with a broad depth and field of view, boundless freedom and a capacity to understand things which are lost on those flying lower. You are free, you are powerful, such as education. Hopefully you've heard someone describe education as an elevating thing like this, and if you haven't, you need only look at a few university logos to see the elevating trend. Angel flying, sun rising, bird taking flight, bird thing. You get it. And although this is typically true with regards to career development or whatever, it is deeply misleading with regards to your mental health because the link between overeducation and mental illness has been known for decades and it's ironic that people are so uneducated when it comes to it. But I want to talk with you about this because you STEM majors, whether you like it or not, are going to be overeducated and so let me tell you the marketing BS free metaphor for how education works. You are floating in the ocean, being struck by rogue waves, being swept by currents, caught in chaos. But by your own volition or fates, you don't get used to it. Instead, one day you peer beneath the surface in search of a way out, and you happen upon a small rock. You've learned something, and if you stretch out one of your legs, you can just reach the rock and it affords you a place to escape some of the ocean's uncertainty. This reprieve, this reward inspires you to peer beneath the surface once more and you find a second rock. You've learned something and now you have a strong and stable foundation and the smaller waves and currents no longer affect you. But after such rewards, you develop a curiosity for the depths and decide to put your head beneath the surface entirely. Initially you see some coral, then some fish and it's beautiful and interesting. So you take a breath and swim down to see it more closely. You then wonder, what exists beneath the shallow beauty, so you swim deeper, and deeper, and deeper until one day you find yourself cold, alone, and surrounded by darkness. You are disorientated, your breath is expiring, and up is indistinguishable from down. Such is education. Now, maybe I need to clarify more of what I'm saying, although I'm certain that many of you know precisely what I speak of, because once you begin to learn, you become acutely aware of your ignorance, right? So you perceive the void within your own mind, the presently unknown. And if someone asked you, what is your purpose in life? You might initially want to say something like, to find happiness. But in that, you now can't help but perceive how little it answers, how vague it is, how even less you understand it. What is happiness? Is it possible to behold it for more than a fleeting instant? And if not, is it worth the pursuit? And is it not a mere neurochemical anyway? And since that is the case, is my life's meaning indistinguishable from that of a drug addict? Aren't they really the same thing, a simple pursuit of a chemical hit? And when I look back over my life at the happiest moments, couldn't I devise the monetary value of them by determining how much dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin I experienced in those moments and then merely consume the required amount of meth, oxy, heroin, and god knows what else needed to reproduce them artificially. Oh look, the happiness I felt when I graduated was worth 650, adjusting for today's per gram street value and inflation. I often think of the first paragraph in The Call of Cthulhu, which goes, The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But someday, the piecing together of dissociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality, and of our frightful position therein, that we shall either go mad of the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. Now for me, the two pieces of dissociated knowledge are philosophy and science, for philosophy demands that you ask big questions, and science demands that you answer them objectively, and some of these questions are best left unanswered for the journey to answer them isn't one of elevation, it's one of disillusion. Honestly, take someone who is overeducated, well off, and most importantly, curious, and instead of a high flyer, they will become a cave diver, and one of the most painful things about going into these depths is that it's impossible to not feel alone. 
in part because people tend to die at such depths and so your fellow divers simply don't exist anymore and in part because for you to get this deep required you to be a bit of an outcast and to make sacrifices, abstain from pleasures, keep few friends, learn to despise comfort for a large part of your life and I don't want to put too sharp a point on this but if any of you are diving, if any of you have intelligence even slightly above average, which by the way you do, be conscious of the dangers and find ways to keep your bearings. Even things like social gaming, exercise, seeing friends, even just leaving a comment below so that you aren't just drifting by will help shed some light down there. And maybe none of you will get what I'm trying to say and think I've gone full manic. This is just the beginning. But I don't know, maybe you do. Maybe you do.